Welcome to the MOOCs course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Fuel Gases. This week and coming next week, what we will be discussing? We will be discussing about the production of fuel and industrial gases. So, why do we need to study about the fuel and industrial gases production process rather directly jumping into the production process of uh, different types of inorganic chemicals which is the main content of the course? Because any plant if you take there are several cases not only inorganic but organic uh, chemicals uh, manufacturing plants if you take what happens there are several cases where these industries inorganic and organic uh, industries depends primarily on fuel and industrial gases for different purposes. Different purposes such as like uh, process heating or uh, heat treatment or for synthesis of uh, different types of inorganic and uh, organic chemicals uh, like that. That is the reason uh, rather directly going into the production process of different types of uh, uh, inorganic chemicals what we are doing we are going to see a few basics few details not only basic few details like manufacturing process etc reactions etc for the production of fuel and industrial gases so chemical industries often depend on gases composed of one or more elements of c h and o single element uh, you know gases are something like h2 n2 etc two element uh, gases something like CH4 etc or these are often used in chemical industries, very often used in chemical industries. These gases are used for fuel purpose also and for synthesis of important inorganic and organic chemicals as well. That is the reason it is essential to have a uh, have a adequate information or knowledge on the production process of these fuel and industrial gases from UG curriculum point of view. right? So, raw materials for supplying these gases are naturally available water, air, coal, natural gas and petroleum. right? So, but however, the uh, natural gas resources and petroleum resources are very uh, limited in India, very very limited. We have a, a few resources in Assam and Gujarat for the natural gas etc. Uh, but other places we do not even have uh, such uh, minimum limited resources also. right? So, because of that one coal uh, is treated as a primary source of uh, production for this fuel and industrial gases uh, in India especially. Okay? So, thus coal is a primary source of carbon for manufacturing fuel gases. Okay? So, now before going into the uh, production of different types of fuel and industrial gases what we do we will have a kind of a classification of uh, these gases. Let us start with fuel gases. Fuel gases classification there are uh, different types of fuel gases are there. Now, we are going to see different types of gases, uh, their composition, their energy content and then application where we often use them. So, different types of fuel gases that we are having are producer gas, water gas, coke oven gas, carbureted or oil gas natural gas and LPG. Right? If you see composition of a producer gas, it consists of CO and H2 in addition to inerts like N2 plus steam if required to reduce the delta H of the process to 0. Net delta H of the reaction if you wanted to make it to 0, then you are supposed to add steam to this uh, producer gas composition. Otherwise, primarily it consists of CO, H2 and N2. Steam is added are required to add only if you wanted to make delta H of the process to become 0. Okay? The energy content if you see per meter cube of gas, the energy content of the producer gas is around 1200 to 1600 kilocalories. Now, the question is that why so much of variation in the energy content of this producer gases if you take only a meter cube of the producer gas. That because as the variation uh, in the composition of uh, CO, H2 uh, and then steam added to it if required, then accordingly the energy content varies. right? Because the CO how much percent it is there, H2 how much percent is there in the gas that makes you know variations in this kilocalorie per meter cube of energy content on the given gas. right? It is often uh, used in heating requirements of steel industries, especially coke ovens. Coke ovens are used to produce coke uh, from the coal 
okay, or uh, upgraded coal. So, this coal are you know processed in coke ovens in order to get the coke, that coke is again used in steel industries especially iron making etc. steel making uh, kind of uh, processes it is used. So, in this process the coke oven gas is a byproduct also. So, coke oven gas is not produced indi individually in general, so it is produced as a kind of byproduct of a process okay, that we are going to see today anyway. Next is water gas which is having a CO and H2 only, right. The energy content of this uh, water gas if you see per meter cube if you take it will have energy content approximately 2500 to 2700 depending on the composition of CO and H2. Variations in CO and H2 makes variations in this energy content of this water gas. Then it is often used for chemical synthesis and heating purpose also. Most of these gases are used for heating and then chemical synthesis purposes. Then coke oven gas it consists of not only CO and H2 but also methane CH4, right. So its energy content you see the variations are too much 4500 to 8000 kilocalorie per meter cube of coke oven gas. So now these many variations uh, the, uh, the variation such a large variation is coming in the, uh, in the energy content or calorific value of the coke oven gas is coming because of the variations in the uh, components CH4, H2 and CO that are present in this gas. If you have more CH4 it is possible that you know uh, uh, more uh, calorific value per meter cube of coke oven gas you may get. It is also used for chemical synthesis and heating. Then carbureted or oil gas which is nothing but water gas and pyrolyzed oil which is used for heating in most of the uh, uh, you know petroleum industries and then the energy content of this gas varies between 4000 to 9000 kilocalorie per meter cube of the oil gas. Okay. The variations again because of the variations in the compositions. The natural gas and LPG uh, compositions are liquefied petroleum gas. If it is primarily methane and then a few, um, few fraction, few percentage of uh, other hydrocarbons then it is natural gas. If you have a uh, liquefied petroleum gas then uh, mostly you have propane and butane kind of uh, uh, alkanes that are present in the gases. Okay. So, these uh, two are you know the same process can be used to produce both of them that is also we are going to see. Now here again you can see their energy content is varying uh, a large from 6000 to 14000 kilocalorie per meter cube because of variations in the compositions. Okay? Because what we understand from uh, these gases any of the gases that you produce you know in the subsequent slide we are going to see the reaction. So, there you can see from the same carbon let us say coal is a source for the carbon and then you do certain kind of reaction more than one component CO, CO2 are possible in general sometimes you know depending on the uh, what is the other reactant CH4 etc also possible. right? So, when these reactions are taking place so more than one components are form forming so then depending on how uh, uh, depending on the degree of purity subsequent after the reaction that you are doing based on that one the composition is going to vary so that accordingly their energy content is going to vary. And then these gases are also used for heating purposes and then chemical synthesis. Now, some of the uh, common chemical reactions occur while uh, we have this uh, fuel gases production processes. What are they that we are going to see now? The first reaction let us say if you have a solid carbon and then you react with uh, gases oxygen with excess air then you get CO2 gas carbon dioxide gas you get with a delta H naught minus 96.5 kilocalorie. Right? So, now this uh, delta H is coming negative that means the enthalpy of the reactants is higher compared to the enthalpy of the products that means it liberates the energy and then it is called it is an exothermic reaction, it is an exothermic reaction. Right? So, when this reaction takes place whatever the energy is there, that one can recover and then use for the uh, uh, different process like process heating etc. Okay? If you have 2 C and O2 C in uh, solid form and then O2 in gaseous form with limited air then you get 2 moles of carbon 
monoxide gases form. And then this delta H naught here again is minus 57.8 kilocalorie minus so that means here also the enthalpy of the reactants is higher compared to that of the product so that means it liberates the energy. And when this uh, reaction occurs the energy is liberated that energy can be stored or you know recovered or processed further to use in different purposes that is the advantage. But now if you take uh, another reaction C plus CO2 then it gives 2 moles of CO right. But the energy if you see here delta H naught is plus 38.7 kilocalories. Now here the energy delta H naught is positive right that means the enthalpy of the reactants is less than that of the product. So, that reaction is not going to occur until and unless if you supply some energy or sufficient amount of energy to the re reactants. So, these are the endothermic reactions. Similarly, C is not going to uh, react with water until and unless you provide sufficient amount of energy adequate energy for this reaction to occur because the delta H naught for this reaction is also positive, it is also endothermic reaction. Here we get CO and then H2 as products. Similarly, if you have CO and then react, try to react it with water, then also reaction does not occur until and unless if you provide uh, adequate energy to the reactants so that products. CO2 and H2 to form because here again delta H naught is plus 0.4 kilocalories positive. Okay. So, now here uh, the some of the reactions are exothermic, some of the reactions are endothermic when C reacts with, ox with oxygen or air and then H2, H2O and then CO2 etc. So, then the details are given. So, depending on the process conditions and then uh, what kind of input are you taking? Let us say oxygen is required, how pure oxygen are you taking? What is uh, amount of oxygen that are you providing to the reactor so that the reaction take place? Is it sufficient amount, limited amount or excess amount? So, based on those things these uh, reactions are going to change. Okay? So, now we see producer gas production process. Raw materials are nothing but coal or blast furnace coke. So, this coke as I mentioned coke ovens are there. So, these coke ovens are used to make coke from the uh, processed coal right? or upgraded coal you uh, use in uh, coke ovens right? so that to get coke and this coke is often used in the different types of furnaces. Okay? One such kind of furnace is blast furnace coke where you produce the coke and then that coke you can use uh, for the production of uh, you know you can use in the steel industry. Okay? So, that coke you can may directly use for uh, producing the producer gas, air is the other raw material and then quantitative requirements. What do you mean by quantitative requirements? That is how much coal you need, how much air you need, that depends on how much product you need, how much uh, what is the quantity of the uh, producer gas uh, product that you want in the uh, in the process. So, accordingly you have to take the coal or coke accordingly you have to take and then air also you have to take. So, those material and energy balance calculations you might have already done in your uh, uh, process calculations course or uh, the same course is also known as uh, material and energy balance course in some other universities as well. So, according to that one if you take basis what is this basis? Basis is that you know required quantity of the product that often we take as a basis. right? Let us say if you wanted to produce 100 normal cubic meters of producer gas, then how much coal or coke is required or how much air is required in addition to that one how much steam etc. required those things you know is nothing but you know quantitative requirements of the process. So, for that these quantitative requirements that we are going to have for almost all process and then the basis is this one, basis is that you know uh, per kg or per ton of the uh, chemical that you produce. Now, here in this case if you if you want to produce 100 normal cubic meters of producer gas, how much coal or coke are required in addition to the air and the steam. right? So, this n m cube is normal cubic meter which is actually sometimes it is a confusion between 
n m cube and then s m cube. n m cube is nothing but normal cubic meter of gas means quantity of gas which at 0 degree centigrade 1.01325 bar absolute pressure and free from water vapor that is completely absolutely dry basis on dry basis occupies the volume of 1 cubic meter. Because we know these gases uh, depending on the size of the uh, container and depending on the size of the temperature and pressure at which we are storing the volume changes the volume changes. So, that is the reason the specify specification of temperature and pressure is very much essential if you are specifying a volume of a gas. So, uh, if you take dry gas uh, at 0 degree centigrade and then 1.01325 uh, bar of absolute pressure, uh, whatever that dry gas occupies the volume is of 1 meter cube, then that is that standard unit is nothing but 1 normal cubic meter, right. Whereas, S m cube is standard cubic meter that is at 20 degree centigrade and 1.01325 bar absolute pressure. So, if you wanted to produce 100 normal cubic meter of producer gas, then you need 20 to 25 kgs of coke and or if you are taking coal as a source of C, then 25 to 30 kgs of coal is required air is required 60 to 80 normal cubic meters and then steam 8 to 10 kgs. Plant capacity is in general 25,000 to 250,000 meter cube per day for most of the existing plants. Now, what is the difference between coke and coal, right? The coal is the one you know natural resources that we get uh, naturally uh, with so many uh, yeah, impurities. So, obviously it will be having less calorific value whereas the coke is processed one almost pure not pure but almost pure carbon source in this one. So, obviously its energy uh, is going to be high. So, high caloric, calorific value would be there but it is also quite polluting, pollution because of the coke is very high compared to the coal, okay. So, that is the difference and then there is also something like pet coke or petroleum coke, what it is. Actually, how do you get coke? Coke also you get from the coal only. What you do? You properly, you know, uh, do some kind of processing like calcination or uh, dry distillation or destructive distillation etc. that you do, then you get almost like a pure coke. Similar process if you do for a uh, petroleum crude, then whatever the coke that you get that is known as the pet coke or petroleum coke. And then in addition to this one, you also may be having heard of the term charcoal. Charcoal is nothing but if you do the incomplete uh, uh, combustion of wood then whatever the coke that you get that is known as the charcoal okay these are uh, these are the terminology we may be often using in this course so that's the reason it is essential to know a few basics or you know differences about them right now how do we uh, produce producer gas from the coke or coal that is what we are going to see now here. So, let us say uh, we have a uh, we need a reactor here actually that is a furnace ok. Uh, in order to produce producer gas from the coke or coal you need a furnace right. So, that furnace is jacketed with uh, you know provision so that one can uh, do the water circulation also if required. Right. So, uh, to this reactor from the top coke or coal is taken, processed coke. Processed means what? You know a natural process we get uh, big big lumps etc. So, then what that we cannot put them in the uh, furnace. So, then what we do? We do you know crushing whatever uh, unit operation that we discussed and then uh, washing then uh, drying these kind of processes you do so that you get fine particles of few mm or few micron size. 
So, those uh, dry uh, coal particles of such small sizes that you put uh, from the top here to the reactor, right. And then from the bottom what you are giving? You are giving air and steam to the reactor and then this furnace is operated at temperature range of 1000 to 1500 degree centigrade depending on the fusion point of ash. Fusion point of ash is very much important. It is approximately 1520 degree centigrade. So, you have to operate this one as temperature at, at temperature less than the uh, fusion point of the ash. Okay. So, you do not uh, want this fusion of ash to take place otherwise it is going to hinder the process. Right? So, such a way that you have to uh, you know you know operate and then why then why not at 1500 degree centigrade why at uh, 1000 why at 1000 degree centigrade that may be a question. These are the process variable one has to operate one has to do the a prior calculation and accordingly decide which temperature is suitable for a required product quality. Right? So, now this also uh, is very essential for the particle to combust. So, now what happens let us say for example, the carbon particle is coming from here at the top, this is the topmost position for the carbon particle. So, by the time it reaches the bottom of the uh, reactor, it should completely burnt with the air that is coming in uh, from the bottom. So, this air is moving up like this. right? So, in the inside the temperature is very high temperature is maintained. So, what you want by the particle it comes to the bottom, it should have a sufficient time or the contact time between the carbon particle or coal particle and then air should be sufficiently large enough that you know uh, by the time it reaches to the uh, bottom of the you know uh, reactor it should be completely burnt. So, the uh, under these conditions under this at this temperature pressure uh, condition that are prevailing in the reactor one has to do a kind of a you know settling velocity of the particle etc. So, it also depends on the size of the particle and then shape of the particle also that is there. So, uh, now see all your you know uh, fluid particle uh, you know interactions that fluid particle mechanics whatever that you study in fluid mechanics all that are coming into the picture here accordingly you have to decide. So, and then also uh, you know based on the time required it's, it should not be actually uh, the time should not be calculated uh, time required to reach the bottom of the reactor. It should be some, some more above height something like this. Why because, why because as the time progresses obviously some ash will form because when coke or coal uh, when you combust uh, because of the impurities inorganic impur impurities present in that sample obviously whatever the cleaning that you do they will be definitely be there. If you wanted to make it 100 percent pure so then its process is not going to be you know economically feasible that is another different problem. Okay? So, that ash when forms it forms uh, it, it, it will be accumulated at the bottom. So, now some portion of the bottom of the reactor is occupied by the ash. So, that is the reason you cannot take the bottommost layer of the uh, reactor as the point to uh, calculate the time required for the particle to reach from the top of the reactor to the bottom of the reactor. It should be something some above point like this. And then at what rate kgs per second should you feed the coke that is again going to have a role. right? And then at what rate of uh, uh, you know at what volumetric flow rate are you allowing air to flow through that is again makes in uh, you know difference here. right? So, all these are the process engineering uh, problems that one has to uh, consider while designing the you know, uh, you know reactor for this uh, particular process. Similar problems may be there in almost all uh, kind of uh, chemical production units. So, one has to be careful like this. So, now these are some of the problems right. The uniformity of the particle is required that is one problem, size and shape has to be uniform then, then only uh, efficiently you, the process will take place. And then the time, the required time that is there for the particle to uh, reach uh, from the top to bottom that should be sufficiently high enough at uh, high, especially high temperature. Right? Those cal calculations are also very difficult, all these fluid particle uh, 
you know, uh, fluid particle mechanics, those calculations you have done at the room temperature, uh, you know, atmospheric pressure, etc. Okay? That is the second issue, time. Third issue is that what about this ash that is formed? Right? This ash has to be continuously removed, that is another issue. So, for, some, for that uh, uh, region what we have, we have some uh, grate at the bottom right? which rotates. So, while rotating this grate there are two advantages, the uh, reactants may be uh, mixed properly for a uniformity and then other one that the same grate is useful to drain out or take out the ash from it. Right? So, the time is why the time is very much essential because now to this point when you are feeding the reactor by that time itself you have spent uh, enough number of unit operations, enough amount of money, enough amount of labor to, grade, uh, to get these particles. Right? So, that means by, by to get this raw material itself you have spent enough money and time, labor, etc. Right? Now, that particle comes through and then let us say if it does not react properly, if, does not, if it is not able to burn by the time it reaches to the bottom of the reactor, what happens? It will mix with the ash. So, you may be thinking that if uh, whatever the unreactant carbon or coke is there, that you may be taken out from the ash and then uh, recycle it, but that is not going to be easy because this ash is very fine, very fine particles, inorganic particles are there. right? So, these are very fine uh, in size and then if the coal is mixed with that one or coke is mixed, coke particles mixed with that one, it will be very, uh, very difficult to separate if it is in dry conditions. If it is in uh, wet conditions, no, you, you should forget about separation of such unreacted coal particles, such difficulties, separation of uh, coal or coke particles from the molten ash. So, that is the reason these problems are very essential engineering problems for a chemical engineers to handle while designing these reactors. Okay? So, from the reaction chemistry point of view, how simple it is, just you know uh, coke or coal is coming and then air and steam are joining inside the reactor and then certain high temperature is maintained and then reaction is taking place, you get the producer gas. So, simple from the chemistry point of view, but from the chemical technology point of view, see how many things you need to worry about it. Okay? So, now whatever the producer gas that you get from the uh, reaction that is occurring inside this furnace, that will be collected from the top and then this hot producer gas would be passed through a waste boiler to recover the energy and then producer gas, cold producer gas is stored. So, while recovering the energy from the hot producer gas, so uh, you know you will be supplying the water. So, then that hot water you can uh, you know convert into the steam and then further join with the air as a recycle amount and then feed to the reactor. Okay? That is how. So, not only that water, but also the processing water in order to keep the reactor at uh, required uh, temperature, you know you are supplying water through the through these jackets also. That water also you can you know uh, use as a uh, you can recycle after uh, after uh, you know uh, making it suitable for the recycling in the form of steam like this to this process. Okay? So, now this is now this this is the simplest one probably that we are going to study in this course. Later on, as we are going into the you know different types of inorganic chemicals production, the flow sheets are going to be more complicated. Now, when you have only one single furnace and then designing and all that that you are doing, so many things are there. Now, if you visualize you know you know when there are so many things are uh, happening prior to the reaction and then after the reaction purification, etc., this entire flow sheet, how many engineering problems would be there, how much thorough chemical engineering knowledge you need to become a successful chemical engineer, you can realize. Okay? So, reactor used is a water cooled jacketed steel furnace, steam and air mixture injected in bottom of the furnace. It is equipped with a rotating grate to remove fusible ash and then solid fuel is added from hopper wall on top of the furnace. Producer gas is cooled by passing through a waste heat boiler. Now, major engineering problem, one is the design problem, design of suitable producer gas furnace that should able to handle uh, three important problems as I mentioned, keep uniform fuel surface and then provide adequate gas fuel contact time, especially at high temperatures 
and then avoid clinkering and provide for proper fused ash removal. Okay, when lot of ash is formed and then it is uh, accumulated at the bottom of the firm, uh, furnace that is going to be forming clinkers and then once the clinkers are forming the removal of such ash is become is going to become much more difficult. Then ad another one is this one addition of correct steam quantities to supply net heat of reaction near 0 on continuous once through process in a, is another problem. Now we see water gas. Right? Raw materials for production of water gas are bituminous, anthracite coal or coke. Then quantitative requirements, if you wanted to uh, produce 100 meter cube of water gas from C, source for C can be coke or different types of coal. Then if you are using coke as source for carbon then 55 kgs are required. If you are using coal as source of carbon then 58 kgs of coal is required. Then air is uh, 220 normal cubic meters of air is required, steam 80 kg is required. Plant capacities such uh, water gas uh, production plants are having high capacity something like 2,50,000 to 15 lakhs normal meter cubes of uh, water gas per day. There are two processes to get uh, water gas uh, from sea sources using air and steam. They are regenerative process and continuous process. We see both of them. Let us start with the regenerative process. In the regenerative process is consist of two steel reactors or generators with refractory lining. One reactor operates on blow period which heats carbon by the reaction Cs that is C in the solid form plus oxygen in the gases form with excess air you can get CO2 this reaction occurs in one uh, generator or reactor. Other reactor operates on a run period where following endothermic reaction takes place. We have already seen this reaction is exothermic. Previously you know when we are discussing about the chemical reactions few slides before we have seen this is exothermic reaction. But in the other reactor which operates on a run period of endothermic reaction that is C in the solid form plus H2O in the liquid form when reacts together it gives CO gases form and H2 gases form, right. The cycle of this process is 4 to 5 minutes and then it is divided as below blow or heat up 35 percent whatever the cycle time is there out of which uh, blow period is 35 percent taken, down run 33 percent is taken up run 30 percent is taken and then short purge up run is 2 percent. Purging in the sense you know you uh, during the process you remove some of the things in order to make the uh, material and energy balance uh, you know suitable as per the requirements. If higher BTU that is British thermal units gas is required then additional high temperature carburetor section is required for pyrolyzing oil spray and mixing. So this is the regenerative process. If you see the pictorially what you can understand here as described here we have uh, two generators, generator 1 and generator 2. This generator 2 is on blow cycle to which you know for this both the reaction whatever the uh, coal or coke that you have taken that is provided from the top like this, okay, this coal, right. And then in the uh, generator 2 that is reactor 2 or you know uh, reactor which operates on blow period. So that here we are calling generator 2, to that one air is supplied, air is supplied like this, right. So now this carbon and then this oxygen reacts with because excess air is there, so then CO2 would be forming. So now these uh, when this reaction occurs obviously gases are there and then ash would also be there. This ash is collected from the bottom like this, okay. Whereas the gases is there, they are collected from the top like this, okay. And there uh, uh, you know uh, what is the difference between blow period and then uh, run period? Blow period or you know uh, blow run, here blow cycle what we can do? We can recover recover or recycle 
completely or part of gases actually that we can do. So, you can recover some of them and then subsequently you can use right, you can recover them and then use them as combustion or blow gas ok. Then other reactor or other generator uh, that is generator 1 is on uprun cycle right. So, here what, what happens in this reactor you know the endothermic reaction takes place generator 2 exothermic reaction is taking place. So, there is a heat liberated ok, there is a heat liberator, but generator 1 endothermic reaction that is C s plus H 2 O giving rise to C O plus H 2 is taking place. So, this reaction will not take place until and unless you provide sufficient amount of energy to this one. So, from where this energy is coming that is the question right. So, one is that you know uh, coal is coming from the top for this reactor also, another one is the steam that you process through this one H 2 O right. So, and then going to this one and then energy whatever energy is required that energy you can take it from the whatever the uh, blow cycle whatever the energy is liberated that you can send it to this reactor and then uh, that, that energy would be helpful for the second reaction to take place because the second reaction in the generator 1 uh, is nothing but is endothermic reaction ok. So, here also in this reaction also there would be some amount of ash forming. So, thus ash, that ash has to be collected from the bottom right and then this process you can do you know as a cycle as a complete cycle you can do. It is a kind of regeneration is taking place uh, by uh, recovery or you know uh, recycling of some of the gases ok. So, that is what you know that is the reason this process is known as the regenerative process, regenerative process here. So, whatever the energy required for both the reactions to take in place or you know you know not, not required to give energy from the outside much the whatever the energy is there from the generator 2 that can be used in generator 1 ok. So, that is and that is the process right. So, now this process whatever the producer gas C O plus H 2 has formed coming from the generator 1 uh, or the reactor that operates on a uh, uprun period. So, then that those gases are you know mostly consisting of CO and H2 they can be collected as water gas or as run gas as shown here ok. Now, the problem in this one the cycle the most important is that the cycle the cycle that operates is a total cycle is 4 to 5 minutes right making this 4 to 5 minute cycle and then appropriately giving the coal uh, feed rate and then giving the appropriate uh, steam uh, volumetric rate etcetera is going to be very tough. One. So, that is another uh, uh, challenging issue about this regenerative process. Now, we see continuous process. So, continuous process to produce uh, water gas is simple what we have we have a simple reactor as shown here which operates between 1000 to 1400 degree centigrade. To this reactor from the top you are sending pulverized coal or coke whatever you want you are using as a feed and then from the bottom you are sending air along with the steam right. So, that the required uh, reaction takes place and then you get water gas. This water gas you can uh, simply use as a fuel or you can uh, take it to the synthesis plant as per the requirement. And then whatever the ash that is forming because of this reaction inside the reactor that ash is collected at the bottom and then that has to be continuously taken out. So, continuously removing ash from this reactor is uh, the major engineering problem, problem of this process. Now, here the problem is that you need uh, you know steam plus uh, O2 right along with the air right. So, how do you get O2? So, if you have pure O2 sufficiently so that can be taken uh, as per the you know reactions uh, reaction as per the stoichiometric and then see all this uh, material and energy balance when you do you calculate all these uh, streams different streams what is the carrying uh, mass rate or volumetric uh, rate and then at what temperature they should be provided and all those things you do the calculation Appro appropriately you have to use them here. Some people directly what they do, they do some plants 
some plants what they do they take the air normal air and then they do they pass it through the liquefaction column so that to get uh, liquefied oxygen and then that along with the steam they take to the reactor whereas the nitrogen they take it for the synthesis that is another option anyway okay so this is the continuous process so before the reactor whatever this process is that you know depends on the process if you directly having you know uh, sufficiently pure enough oxygen and then steam directly you put them in the reactor otherwise one has to go for this one which is economic process description it is based on use of tonnage or low purity grade oxygen is made by a separation right and then correct ratio of steam oxygen and coal added to the reactor so that to yield a self sustaining reaction of approximately zero heat release self sustaining reaction in the sense the, the delta h not should be close to the zero subsequent innovation allow for ash content more than 30% also so that indian coal can be used now the basic process is that one whatever the flow sheet is shown so now one can add up and then make modification as per their requirements okay there are several innovations are there some of them are such a way that you know indian coal indian coal is the one where you know lot of you know ash contents are present in the coal up to 30% even more 40% also there so you know uh, such innovations are also there anyway so major engineering problems in the continuous process is the designing suitable ash removal systems for various uh, grades of coal in the case of regenerative process optimizing the cycle whether it is 4 to 5 minutes 4 minutes 5 minutes or 6 minutes what it is that optimization is you know another uh, big engineering problem for regenerative processes now we see production of coke oven gas In India there is a shortage of natural gas also there is a high demand of fertilizers so now because of that reason what we have we have a processes where a combination of these two is occurring you are doing the fertilizer production as well as you are producing some amount of natural gases so thus a combination plant producing these two products has been amassed and then because of this combination net results is a coke requirement for blast furnace yielding coke oven gas yielding coke oven gas okay so how it is that is what we are going to see this gas can be converted to ammonia synthesis gas as well now the process if you uh, see here what we have we have a uh, by product coke oven shown here to this one coking coal whatever the upgraded coal is there that is fed from the top right and then in this one the coking takes place in order to coking takes place what you have to produce you have to produce uh, you know what you have to do you have to supply energy and that's that energy is supplied by producer gas the heat requirement taken care by this producer gas along with the air so now uh, in this uh, uh, batch type by product coking oven or coke oven once the coking process is done the coke is collected from the bottom for the blast furnace whereas the gases there those gases include the coke oven gases those gases include the coke oven gases along with some impurities they are passed through a cooler then they undergo different types of separation purification steps all these are the purification steps so first purification step is the electrostatic precipitator so that to remove tar dust ash kind of uh, contents if anything are present in the gas they should be avoided or removed by applying the elect electrostatic precipitation principles here in the electrostatic precipitator this is one of the uh, one type of unit operation that we have not studied in our week one anyway okay so now here uh, from the coke oven gases whatever the tar dust etc have been removed using the electrostatic precipitation principle those gases are further taken into uh, sulfuric acid h2so4 sulfuric acid h2so4 scrubbing unit so here these gases are put from the bottom and then from the top h2so4 is supplied so that scrubbing of the gases is takes place and then because of that one during the process uh, ammonium sulfate also forms ammonium sulfate also forms okay so after this uh, h2so4 scrubbing whatever the gases are there they are 
com pass through a compressor at uh, 15 atmospheric pressure and then it that passes through hydrocarbon scrubber. Hydrocarbon scrubber you know here by the name you know it scrubs the hydrocarbonate, it, it separates the hydrocarbons from the uh, gases mixture because gases mixture is not only having uh, CH4, H2 and CO, it is also having CO2 and then hydrocarbons, H2S, yes, etc. these kind of things, right. So, whatever the hydrocarbons are there, those things are removed in this hydrocarbon scrubber. For that you need to have a light oil in which these hydrocarbons are dissolve, dissolving easily that they can be dissolved, okay. So, once the hydrocarbons are separated or scrubbed out from the gases, those gases would be collected would be having you know 60 percent of H2 and then 25 percent of CH4 and 6 percent of CO. CO2 is impurity, H2S is also impurity and then C6, C6, HY is nothing but hydrocarbons these are also impurities. Though you are doing so many process to remove, it is not possible to remove completely, there will be some amount would be there, right. So, uh, from the bottom of the hydrocarbon scrubbers you will get the uh, spent oil along with the coal chemicals. Right. They may also be having some value, NH4, NH4 to twice SO4 is also having some kind of a market, so they can also be used. Even tar and tar may also be used for some purposes, okay. So this, uh, if you are okay with the little uh, amount of CO2 and then H2S yes, and then little amount of uh, you know hydrocarbons in your uh, coke oven gas, then you can take them as a product coke oven gas. Right. If you want further purification because you want like you know, uh, you know this, this product, these gases if you wanted to use for the uh, you know fertilizer industry or for production of fertilizers, what you have to do? You have to remove CO2 completely. So that what you have to do? This coke oven gas with minor impurities whatever are there that you have to pass through CO2 scrubber, carbon dioxide scrubber which is you know in you know to which gases are uh, separate from the bottom and then from the top ammonia liquor is uh, sprayed. So, in the counter current way these two are interacting. So, uh, once the CO2 is removed the spent NH3 liquor, spent NH3 liquor ammonia liquor is collected from the uh, bottom or uh, from the top whatever the gases are there they will be passed through silica gel dryer so that to uh, uh, remove uh, any amount of H2S etc or CO2 etc remaining there itself there again okay especially H2S etc. Then after this you know you uh, pass it to you pass those gases through a liquefaction separator where hydrocarbons are liquefied and separated out. Hydrocarbons are liquefied and separated out and then remaining then what you are having you are having you know uh, you know H2 CO and these things are only you are having CH4 these things are only you are having. So, that you those gases you further process through or send through CO scrubber to which liquid nitrogen is uh, sprayed from the top and then from the bottom these gases are uh, you know uh, going. So, counter current way they interact and then from the bottom what you get CO and then N2 liquid form you get. So, whatever the top gases is there that would be pure in 90 percent of H2 and 10 percent of N2. So, that is sufficiently pure enough for ammonia synthesis, right. So, these gases you can take to ammonia synthesis gas production unit, okay. Same thing is explained here. Upgraded coal for coking purpose is fed to a byproduct coke oven. This coke oven uses producer gas for heating purpose the batch chamber the whatever the batch chamber that is we are using for the heating purpose you know you know that operates at 1000 degree centigrade and for 12 to 20 hours. Gas is removed continuously and put through a series of purification steps. If NH3 synthesis gas is required further purification including scrubbing with alkali to remove CO2 liquefaction to remove light hydrocarbons and finally scrubbing with N2 to take out CO. N2 for scrubbing 
and makeup is obtained from a liquid air fractionator separately. This is not this is not shown in the process. So obviously, see now we are concentrating only on the cocaven producing uh, cocaven gas production and then ammonia synthesis gas production. So only required things only we are showing here. We are not discussing about how N2 is coming, how H2SO4 coming. They are separate process. They are we are using them here. Okay. If at all it is required to produce on site then you have to produce on site also. O2 being used to purify pig iron and make high grade steel by Lynch and Donovich process. Okay. So all these steps we have seen I discussed in the previous slide anyway. Major engineering problems associated with this process are obtaining suitable grades of coking coal in India that is one big issue because washing pre-roasting and solvent extraction methods has to be uh, applied for that coke and then they take lot of you know, uh, you know efforts, uh, time, labor and then uh, capital cost everything, right. So not only operation cost, so then because of that one process may become uh, economically expensive. Then choice of scrubbing liquors for CO2 and CO is another issue, one has to go for uh, cheaper ones or economic ones. Copper format is a best option but it is too expensive for this purpose, thus liquid N2 is specified. And then economics of coke oven gas, if you take 1.8 multiplied by 10 power 6 meter cube of coke oven gas used in ammonia synthesis plant to produce 500 tons of ammonia per day. You can now seeing this number you can see how much important is uh, coke oven gas combined with the fertilizer industry. Okay. It is an indication of importance of this gas in Indian chemical industries especially from fertilizer industries viewpoint. This is primary because of lack of sufficient natural gas resources in India. The references for today's lecture are provided here, however most of the details you can find either in this book or in this book. Thank you.